have uh, Friday uh, fitness store uh, 10 to 3 p.m. Uh, please click here. And um, today, um, as you know, as my new mind was. George Fisher um, passed last Friday or Thursday? Thursday, yeah, Thursday. And so we have a memorial service uh, on 3 p.m. Uh, at uh, Ramsville. Ram Ramsville. Ramsville, IBMC. And um, also, Eileen. Uh, I mean, Eileen's uh, brother passed away. And they have visitation today. Unfortunately, I don't have the time, but it's on Facebook. Um, and also a memorial service, I believe it's on Monday for her brother. Uh, any other announcement? Okay, then we will begin our worship service.
the rise. Okay, so we call the position. Call. Holy Spirit. Ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. <laughs> Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. <laughs> Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. <laughs> Let's pray together. Ever living and ever loving God, we pray to you for your loving presence with us. Come, Holy Spirit, take and transform our societies, that broken people find healing, that lonely people find love, that bitter people find peace, that fearful people find hope. Come, Holy Spirit. Take our moments of leaders and governments and bring me to all. The communication can be open. The relationships between hostile people and hostile nations will evaporate. The hunger for justice addresses the hunger for food fed by so many. Come, Holy Spirit, be your church that our worship will be ever more pleasing to you. That prayers will change our minds instead of trying to get you to change yours. That our lives will make a real difference to real people in the real world. Come, oh, Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your presence so that more and more every day, all that we do and say and hope will be an act of worship to you and an expression of love to others. To the glory of your name. Amen. Now we see in the number three, three, four, sweet, sweet spirit. We sing together. Of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Please sing. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Esmeralda. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Jeannie. You know, today's a special day. Oh boy, what is it? This is this Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost? What's Pentecost? How much does a penta cost? Really is. It's not a penta. It's Pentecost. It's a special time when we celebrate the birthday of the church. Oh boy, oh boy, I love birthdays. Is there cake and presents and games? Is there a party? Do we sing happy birthday to you? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. Oh, Ez, really. Let me tell you about Pentecost. Okay, shoot. Well, this was after Jesus died, was resurrected, and spent 50 days with his disciples and then went back into heaven. Boy, they must have been sad to see him go. It would be like losing him twice. Well, before he left, he promised to send someone to comfort them and to guide them. So the disciples did what Jesus told them to do and they went to Jerusalem to wait for the Holy Spirit. Oh, wait, now I remember. They were all sitting around a table when a tornado hit and mixed everything up, throwing dishes and papers and everything all over the place. And then their heads caught on fire and burned their hair. Ez, where do you come up with these things? It's in the Bible, Jeannie. Hmm. Well, there was no tornado or burning of hair. Let me finish, okay? Okay. So the disciples went to Jerusalem to wait for the Holy Spirit as Jesus promised. And while they were hanging out in the house, they heard a sound like the rushing of the wind. The tornado, right? No, no tornado. It was the sound of rushing wind. Can you make the sound of rushing wind? Sure. <sighs> right. The sound of the rushing wind filled the whole house and what appeared to be tongues of fire up on, appeared over each disciple's head. Told you, that must have hurted. No, it didn't burn their heads or set their clothes on fire. Not that kind of fire. Hmm, how can I explain it? It's sort of like this. You know when your teacher is trying to teach you something really difficult to understand? Yeah, she does that a lot. Well, do you remember how you felt when you finally realized what she was talking about and you suddenly understood the lesson, remembering all of the details? Yeah, I would get really excited and happy and I could hardly keep still. I knew something no one else knew and I could hardly wait to share it with all the other peoples. Right, that's something a little like that. It was like a light bulb went on in your head. Not a real light bulb, but something like that. So the flames weren't really there? Oh, I think they were, just not like the flames and fire we know. Sometimes in the Bible, God appears as fire, like, burn, like the burning bush with Moses. The flames showed that God's spirit was present. Then most of the most amazing things of all happened. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began speaking in different tongues. They didn't know these languages. They only spoke Aramaic and they never, they had never spoken any other languages. Wow, did they go to school in Babel? No, the Holy Spirit made it possible for them to speak in languages or tongues from all over the world. It was crowded in Jerusalem that day and many people heard all the racket and came to the house to see what was going on. The people realized that even though they all spoke different languages, they could understand what the disciples were saying. The people were amazed and confused. And then Peter stepped forward to speak. What did he talk about? He spoke about God and how all the promises of God were coming true. He told people about how God poured out his Holy Spirit, just as he promised. He told them about the power of the Holy Spirit and how wonderful and amazing things the Holy Spirit would cause to happen. And then... What? What? Well, he began to tell the people about his friend and savior, Jesus, and that Jesus came to be their friend and savior too. 
The Bible tells us that about 3,000 people believed Peter's message and became Christians, and they all heard them, him speak in their own language. Wow, that's pretty amazing. I wish I lived in the time that when the Holy Spirit was doing all that. Well, that's really the amazing part of this whole story. That same Holy Spirit that filled those first believers is the same Holy Spirit that lives within you and I and all who believe and accept Jesus as our friend and Savior. And all those wonderful and exciting things that the Holy Spirit did through believers back then can still be done today through us if we allow him to work his power through us. I don't understand. I'm so little. Where is he? He's inside of each believer. When God wants us to do something that we're not capable of doing ourselves, we can trust the Holy Spirit to give us the power to do it. Sometimes it's reading the Bible. You know, some passages are difficult to understand, and we have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us understand, and he'll do that. Sometimes God wants to talk to us to talk to someone about Jesus, and we're afraid we can't do that. We don't know the words to say. Well, the Holy Spirit will guide us into saying what God wants us to say. And sometimes we go through very difficult times and we think we just can't make it. Well, the Holy Spirit will comfort us and help us through it. Wow. So Pentecost really is the start of the church. It's the church's birthday and we get the birthday gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right. You got it, Esmeralda. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and all of the amazing good things that happen in the world because the Holy Spirit is in us. Thank you for our friend and Savior, Jesus, and for your love and grace. Amen. Happy birthday, church. Happy birthday, church. Bye. It's time to offering that is of our hearts and minds and our life to God, God of mercy and love. And it will rise. Spirit within them. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. 
What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. A person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Happy Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost is the birthday of the church, as you know. And it was the day when the Holy Spirit came down to the disciples blessed them, and empowered, empowered them to bring life to everyone they met in life. According to the Bible, on the day of Pentecost, Jesus' followers gathered in the upper room, and suddenly a strong wind with a stormy sound came down from heaven and filled the house where they were. The people watched an amazing vision, flames of fire, like tongues, touched them. Soon, the believers were gifted with the ability to speak new languages. How marvelous it was. But the more amazing thing is that by the presence of the Holy Spirit, there happened a real communication between people over any human barriers. There was a true union despite people's diversity and differences. And on this day, the day of Pentecost, can we experience the holy presence of the spirits coming down from heaven here and now? Can we? Especially when we have hard times letting us feel helplessness and hopelessness, when we face the evil powers devastating our human lives, can we yet experience the presence of the Spirit? When we are struggling, discouraged, and challenged despite having faith, do we yet believe that the Spirit can change our life? Of course, we may not have the same dramatic Pentecost events, not as the disciples experienced the Spirit to it stands like the strong wind and fire. Nonetheless, the Bible invites us not to stop, not to stop praying for the presence of the Spirit. We need to remember the disciples experienced the fullness of the Holy Spirit in their difficult situation where they could not expect anything from heaven. See, their Lord left to heaven, and the Roman and Jewish authorities were looking for them to arrest. But they did not stop gathering and praying together. And just like the people in the Bible, we can open ourselves to the Holy Spirit so that the Spirit of God visits us here and right now. Although we, although we don't know in what ways the Spirit comes to us, we can still believe that the Spirit of God can change all things new. In our era, when people trust only themselves, it might look absurd or ridiculous to seek and rely on the Spirit of God who is not visible. We are tempted to close off ourselves from God in this world. But the Bible clearly testified to a certain truth this morning. That is, if we truly open our hearts to Holy Spirit, then the Spirit of God will come to us and lead us into God's way. If we give way to the Spirit, surrendering our will, then the Holy Spirit will dwell in us and lead us to the way of Christ. So today, Pentecost Day, we all are 
ask the question, are you able to open your heart fully to the Spirit of God? Can you surrender your will to God so that the Spirit can rule your souls and lead your life? Can you fully rely on the Spirit of God, praying that you want to be more like Jesus Christ? The people whose hearts were filled with the Holy Spirit experienced some change in their life. For example, Paul the Apostle, his life testified the fact, right? Since he had met Jesus on the way to Damascus, his life completely changed from the life of pulling down Christians to the life of sharing Christ's love with Gentiles. We also know the Peter, who had denied his Lord three times, tried his best to follow in Jesus' footsteps, even in the crisis of his death. Likewise, the Holy Spirit teaches us that the way of Christ is the most valuable in life. Worldly people only pursue wealth, fame, and power for their benefits. Of course, they are important to human life. If I say that they are worldly to seek, they are nothing to seek, then I might be a hypocrite. But they are not that valuable enough to risk our life. Believing and following Jesus, saving lives, making peace, and maintaining a friendship with the love within our community is more than more important, more important than them. Yes, saving lives and preserving the holiness of life is the most important. For that, the Holy Spirit comes to us and brings about, brings about change in our life. Specifically, first of all, the Spirit of God guides us to the way of Christ Jesus. By the work of the Holy Spirit, we can believe that Jesus is our Savior and He is the only way we should belong to. Yes, He is the only way we belong to. Although many people attend church, many of them live spiritlessly. Why? This is because they don't have strong confidence that Jesus is the Lord of their life. Although the disciples spent time with Jesus for three years, they didn't experience a real life transformation before the Pentecost event. Why? This is because they didn't have a strong inner confidence that Jesus was the real Lord of life. They believed only like Jesus would bring peace to their earthly life. But since they um, they had been captivated by the Holy Spirit. They realized what God's redeeming love was indeed, and how the love could be fulfilled not only in heaven but also on earth. And then the disciples' lives were completely changed. The Bible teaches this fact. If we totally open our hearts to Holy Spirit, we can have stronger confidence in Jesus Christ and we will be led into the way of Jesus like the disciples. Yes, we can have the mind and heart of Christ by the Spirit as Paul says in Corinthians chapter 2, the first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 15 says the person with Spirit makes judgment about all things but such a person is not subject to merely human judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord to instruct him? But we, Christians, with the Spirit, have the mind of Christ. Amen. Second, therefore, the Spirit of God provides us with the power to distinguish what is right and what is wrong in life. In other words, the Spirit teaches us how to follow Jesus and how to live in the world. Although we are Christians, we can be easily tempted to choose to go the wrong way. 
However, as the Apostle Paul says, because the Spirit searches everything, including the depths of God, spiritual people can comprehend everything by the mind of Christ. This is because, this is, that's why the book of John names the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. With the help of the Spirit of Truth, the people of faith, see things from the mind of heart, mind and heart of Christ, and we can identify what is right, what is wrong, and what is faithful, what is unfaithful, and what is truthful in life. Third, third, the Spirit of God invites us to take care of our neighbors struggling and suffering in the world. Therefore, the people filled with the Holy Spirit cannot overlook our neighbors in pain. Because the people captivated, captivated by the Spirit have the mind and heart of Christ, they cannot but reach out to their hands to others in pain and embrace them with the love of Christ. That is the people with the Spirit. Yes, we know the mystery of God's love and blessing. That is, as we pour out our love, as we try to empty, empty our, our love for our neighbors, we will be more filled with God's love and grace, right? Then let us think about ourselves. Are we the people filled with the Holy Spirit? Do we really want to be captivated by the Spirit and change our life in a way to save lives and care for them? My sisters and brothers in Christ, today, let us open ourselves to the Holy Spirit who will work up, who will work up a new life in us. Then, we will have the true Pentecost among us, experiencing the Spirit touching our broken hearts and souls. Therefore, seek this Spirit and ask the Spirit to awaken your soul. Request the Spirit to dwell in your life always, to live your life and to change your life for the good, for the good work of faith. And request the Spirit to make you be more faithful to Jesus Christ and request the Spirit to set you on fire of love that you can love others as yourself. May this Spirit, the Spirit of God, fill our souls and make us new. Amen. Now we have him free. Nine, three, skip of the living God. We sing together. And everyone rise.
beautiful day, the beautiful weekend, and the beauty that surrounds us every day in this special place. Lord, thank you for the fellowship, the support, and the community of St. Mark's and Napanock. Father, we give thanks for your Son, Jesus, and for the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you renew our faith and that you fill us with the Spirit so that others may see you through us. Lord, help us to remember to reach out to our neighbors and to meet them where they are and help as they need. Father, I thank you for my son Christopher as we celebrate his birthday today. Lord, he truly is my rock and means so much to me. And Lord, fill our hearts today with um, wonderful memories of Grandma, who also shares Chris's birthday. Lord, we give thanks for the life of Pastor George Fisher. Father, we know where George is, and we're so grateful that we had the opportunity to know him. We're grateful for his ministry. And Lord, we will miss, <laughs> miss his, uh, his dad jokes and his sweet, sweet spirit. Father, be with Gretchen and the family at this difficult time. Um, I know that they are people of faith, but as humans, we're going to miss George. They will miss him. Comfort them and give them your peace. Father, for all of those around the world right now who are suffering, particularly in the light of these horrible tragedies recently, I ask that they know your presence. And Lord, for those families that lost their children, help them know that their children were not alone that morning, that you were there with them, holding them and cradling them as you brought them home to you. Father, help us as a people to find solutions to the many, many problems. Open the minds of our leaders so that they will know your will, Lord, and have the courage to follow it. Father, uh, we ask your healing blessings for those among us who are ill. We lift up Kathy, and as she starts her treatments this week, we ask that you give her strength and courage and um, that you be with Floyd and Jeannie uh, as well. Father, we are thankful for Stevie and his continued healing. And Lord, for those that suffer from dementia and Alzheimer's, Lord, we pray that, that your healing can come upon them and that your, that, that your will is done and that a cure for this disease is found soon. Father, we ask all these things in your name. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who honestly repent of their sins, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors. 
and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. In the Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. Jesus Christ, 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We will lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is His right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful things always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and enjoy their unending name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and re resurrection, he gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us the new covenants by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, hey, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took a cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your body acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Who are the Holy Spirit here on us gathered? gathered and on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, and all honor and glory is yours, my Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ. Totally torn and broken. For you. For you. This is the blood of Christ. Hold up. For you. For your life. upon this table to be the body and the blood of Christ for the Lord this time. Now we have closing in in the book. 
347 uh, spirit song. Can everyone rise and sing together?